Hello everyone, welcome back to the security. Today we are going to start our third episode in a series of incident response. In the second video, we talked about the first phase of incident response and that was preparation. As we have discussed before, the definition of incident would be anything that is not normal within your network can be, it can be an incident. Because incident can range from a very basic naive event to the destruction of some system or ransomware. That would be the range that we are discussing right now when we are talking about an incident response. In the last episode, we talked about preparation phase of the incident where we discussed that how the team should be ready before the operation before the incident. In the normal operations, when there is no uh, incident happening, the team should be ready to respond to any incident. Because we don't want to rush the team at the very last minute to get themselves ready. Because when the incident happens, you don't know how bad it is going to be. So you want your team to be alert and be ready to respond right away before the incident gets way bigger than you can respond to. Today we are going to talk about the second phase in the um, incident response life cycle and that is identification. So this incident response phase involves recognizing and understanding potential security incidents within an organization. This phase focuses on detecting early signs such as unusual activities or indicators, determining the source of detection and assessing the severity and impact of the incidents. Before we move into exactly what happens within the organization during this phase, I would like to talk about a little bit on attack vectors because in the context of incident response, recognizing and underlining attack vectors is very crucial. Attack vectors represent the methods or paths that attackers employ to compromise systems or networks. While, while organizations should generally be prepared to handle a broad range of incidents, it is very essential to focus on readiness for incidents using common attack vectors. Because the common attack vectors are the ones that are very often used by attackers to compromise systems. And this approach involves identifying and fortifying against the prevalent methods that cyber adversaries often employ, ensuring that the incident response team is well equipped to detect mitigate and respond effectively to the most likely and frequently encountered security threats. By prioritizing preparation and identification for common attack vectors, organizations can enhance their resilience against prevalent cybersecurity risks. The described phase is focused on detecting and determining whether a departure from normal operations within an organization constitutes a security incident. It involves assessing the nature and scope of the identified deviation to confirm whether it qualifies as an incident. This phase is crucial for swiftly establishing the boundaries or extent of the incident. So the goal overall is to efficiently identify security incidents, enabling a prompt and targeted response to mitigate potential risks and minimize impact. Now, we have talked about deviation from the policy. We have talked about the attack vectors there are two terminologies that you can see on the screen are precursor and indicators. So precursor are the events that are 
not part of the incident per se, but they are the early signs that something bad is going to happen. Not necessarily bad, but something different, something which is not normal within the organization is happening or will happen. That is the precursor events. The indicators are the ones that happen to tell you that the incident is currently in progress. The system has been compromised and the attacker is currently on the system performing their incident. So how do you detect the incidents in your environment. The detection of the incident is very simple and straightforward because it can be achieved through various means such as utilizing a SIM solution or any other security alert from your firewall, IDS, IPS or even though it could be manually initiated from a help desk. These all tools will enable organizations to proactively monitor and analyze network activities, facilitating the early detection of potential security threats. Additionally, user-initiated incident identification occurs when individual contacts contacts the help desk to report suspicious activities or raise security concerns. Another proactive approach could be threat hunting where security professionals actively search for signs of compromise within the network. They create a hypothesis that today we are going to search for XYZ attack and they assume that it has already occurred and they will be running the different queries to search for the signs of compromise within the network. The basic principle is that Earlier, early, earlier an incident is identified, more effectively and properly it can be addressed, minimizing potential damage and ensuring a robust overall incident response. So when it comes to the scope of the incident, to determine the security, the scope of the security event and documenting relevant evidence is a very, very critical step in the, in the incident response process. Scope identification involves understanding the extent and the impact of the incident on an organization's system, networks, and data. The incident response team may employ various methods for scope identification. For example, it could be the network analysis, analyzing network traffic to identify the pathways and systems affected by the incident. They can also examine system logs, artifacts, and forensic evidence to trace activities and potential compromise on affected systems. Leveraging EDR solutions to investigate activities on individual endpoints and determining the scope of compromise. So once you have the source of detection and then you have analyzed a particular incident and identified the scope of that particular incident, the next is to prioritize the handling of the incident because it is perhaps the most critical decision point in the incident handling process. Incidents should not be handled on a first come first serve basis as a result of resource limitations. Instead, handling should be prioritized based on the relevant factors, which would be functional impact. Incidents targeting IT systems typically impact the business functionality than that those systems provide, resulting in some type of some type of negative impact to the users or those systems. Information impact of the incident. Incidents may affect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the organization's information. For example, a malicious agent may exfiltrate sensitive information. Recoverability from the incident. That's the last one. The size of the incident and the type of resources it affects. 
will determine the amount of time and resources that must be spent on recovering from that incident. In some instances, it is not possible to recover from an incident. For example, if the confidentiality of the system and sensitive information has been compromised and it would not make sense and it would not make sense to spend limited resources on an elongated incident handling life cycle unless that effort was directed at ensuring that a similar incident did not occur in future. In the context of incident response, when an incident occurs, it is crucial to promptly notify the customer, sorry, promptly notify the computer incident response team members. Effective communication should be coordinated among team members and designated command center staff, such as management and system administrators. This ensures that the right personnel are informed and can contribute to the incident response efforts. It is further recommended to have at least two incident handlers available during an incident. The primary handler focuses on identifying and assessing the incident, making critical decisions. Simultaneously, the secondary handler supports by gathering evidence and assisting in the various response talks. This dual handler approach enhances the team's capability to manage incidents efficiently, ensuring a more thorough, effective response. That's it from the identification phase of the incident response. If you like the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video channel. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.